have agreed, with which we have agreed. And you think you have to want more than you need. Until you have it all, you won't be free. Society, you're crazy. You're not lonely without me. When you want more than you have, you think you need. I was working. I'm working now, but I was used to live on the streets, and I met a lot of guys on the streets. I know what it's like living on the streets because I lived in dumpster dumpsters bags, you name it. I was around. And I learned about the, about the cops, police, eh, trying to keep people off the streets, which there goes a guy right there, a friend of mine, has that dog. Okay. He's on the streets. Yeah. When I was 17, before I, before I got married, I, uh, the biggest money I've ever made in St. John was 400 bucks. In one on night? My, one night. Wow. And that was working at the club. Yeah. I was stabbed. I was shot. I had people jump right on you. I, I actually was homeless for about two weeks, and I was jumping couch to couch to couch, which was a problem for me because, uh, lucky for me, I had enough friends that would let me stay on their couch. But I did stay out in the cold for about three days which was very terrible. I got sick really easily because I have no immune system and I got sick on, on a, automatically and that was not, not good because I had to stay up in the hospital for about three months. Warren Maddox is the executive director of the homeless shelter in Fredericton. He deals with homeless people every single day. And you know, when we talk about home, it doesn't mean, you know, a, you know, a 6,500 square foot house somewhere. Home is a home um, and it's where you're safe and secure and, 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 and enjoy the, you know, the, the space around you. Um, there needs to be some stability. I mean there's enough chaos and, and stigma and other things surrounding them as it is. We took to the streets of Fredericton to ask citizens what they thought about homelessness. If you look at any media representation, um, a homeless person is a, it's a trope, it's a, it's a go-to stereotype. To, you know, if, you, if you have to show that the city in your movie suffers from um, social problems or poverty, you put a homeless person with a blanket on the street, so it's, um, uh, it's a pretty obvious negative stereotype. Um, thing, I think what we need to realize about homelessness is that it can essentially happen to anyone. I think there is a bit of a stereotype with homeless is that they kind of pull themselves into it either with something like drugs or just like poor handling of money, but it can just happen to anyone who just happens to be in a bad financial situation. I think the stigma that is attached to homelessness is that these people, um, obviously they don't look like they're in the best condition and I think there's also an association that a lot of them are mentally ill, but I think it could be because of, I think what needs to be thought of with these people is that um, what happened in their past life and that I think we just have to register that everyone is human and can fall under these sad circumstances. I think of uh, people who have to live on the street and I especially think of in the winter when it must be cold and that would be a drag. You know, mental illness and I think the, the big stigma is that, you know, somebody's homeless or has a mental illness that they're dangerous. And that's such a small, small, small percentage that that it's absurd, you know, to, to treat everybody that way. Gosh, I don't know, 20, 30 percent of the people that are in the shelter here are suffering from a mental illness. Um, when you combine that with addictions and, you know, mental illness and addictions pretty much walk through life hand in hand, um, you know, that goes up to probably 60 percent of, of the people here that, that are in that category. I had a friend of mine uh, when I lived in St. John, a real good friend of mine, he hung around together before I got married. And uh, we, each, we each took a different ground, and he, he just wasn't going to, you know, make it. He thought the best thing, best thing to do was commit suicide. What did he do? He, he hung himself. I watched him hung himself. Is suicide a very, like, 
do a lot of homeless people resort to that? Well, in the end? I. If you get to if you get to a point that you've got no other road to take, mm -hmm. that's the first thing they think of mm -hmm. is committing suicide. You know, because I know there's like one man who like plays a, a guitar over by King's Place, and he'll ask for money, but no one's ever been aggressive. Maybe they'll call a name or something, but nothing beyond that. Well, I think it's a very unfortunate situation that they're in. Could be self, I guess, inflicted or not, inf but along those lines. Or it could also be outside sources like losing a job or the economy turning over and housing is expensive and prices just rise. Yeah, a lot of them are pushy, a lot of them are demanding, a lot of them are. <laughs> Well, yeah, a lot of them want it, well, I guess, are pushy in the sense that they feel like we owe them something, but a lot of them are nice and friendly too, right, so. Homelessness is absolutely an embarrassment to the freaking Canadian society. <laughs> like, give me a head shake. We should not have such things here. Anybody who doesn't have some type of, of housing is a problem. It's an embarrassment on a, a country like ours. Um, you know, that we've got incredible prosperity in this country. We've got, you know, that we're, you know, we're paying considerable in taxes and, and, you know, some of that is going to things that, that I don't personally believe it should be going to. Um, you know, sending billions of dollars to multi-billion dollar companies to do stuff in, in oil exploration or whatever I don't think is, is particularly good use of money. But that's a personal thing, um, you know, that I'm sure that there are, are equal numbers of articulate and intelligent voices that would argue that, that it is a good thing to do. I think just redistributing the money that there is, there's lots of money around, okay. but it goes to things like the government spending all their money, sending us all those things about their wonderful e economic plan, or Bill C-51, yeah. or it's a question of the army. Will. I mean, yeah. there's money there. They just choose, they, they just decide where it's go, it goes. So when they say there's no money, in quotation marks, yeah. what, it, what they really mean is we don't want to give the money there. Because when they want the money for something, exactly. it appears, yeah. right? And they're the ones that are the major you know, the major drivers in terms of, of bringing in tax dollars and revenue and, and allocations that way. Um, they have the money. Um, they're just not, you know, they're choosing to use it in different ways or they're putting so many different caveats on trying to access the money that, that it's almost impossible to get, so. They need to make sure the place is clean, take care of their building, especially the men's shelter. I've never been in there, but I've heard a lot of stories about it. It's like filthy, dirty, unclean. Even the showers are not clean. So they have to start having more workers to work with the shelters so they can keep it more clean. Like if they had three workers to keep it clean and then one person to take care of everybody in there, it would be a lot better because nobody would get sick. There's, there's the kitchen there, but in my situation, it just about kills me to get up to the kitchen and back because I'm in a walker. Right. Some are too mentally ill to go inside. Our criteria is people fleeing, fleeing abuse. Mm -hmm. But often we'll get calls from women who've become evicted with kids from their apartments and or men and women and their kids. And there's nothing right now in Fredericton for families. <laughs> So in other words, if uh, a mom or a dad can't provide shelter, their kids get apprehended by social development. So the shelters only take men or women, they don't take children. Uh, so when you add that to the equation, there's just this big hole in terms of providing shelter for families. I had my, my wife, and we had our kids, I had both of them, they were only 15 months old, and I lived on the streets with them, oh, wow. in a card box, in a box, cardboard. Giving a damn and spending some of our money the right way, instead of on stupid things. But we do not take responsibility ourselves. I feel that had we, as a society, taken 
these problems and put them upon ourselves rather than saying oh government you fix or oh you people you do this that organizations why why must we rely on these people you know we must do it ourselves because otherwise situation will never be fixed you know providing shelters for everyone so i i know there's been some communities in the states where they've um used that approach that um Facilities are set up for homeless people to live in nice apartment type complexes, which include um, um, social support okay. um, and other kinds of professional support for folks that have worked really well. So something like that would be really exciting to see in Fredericton. Education. You have to tell the homeless people they are human. The less fortunate, they're quiet because they think that nobody cares and they're, they're not wanted. And to answer your question in a long-winded way, it's education and respect that they are human beings, that they are part of the community. You know, I mean, there's no, they don't do it. I hope you're not lonely.